Hello, everyone. My name is Tyler McMahon with Ruben Networks, and this is part three of our Networking Essentials video series. In this final part three, we are finally going to get to enabling routing. Now, we're just going to start with connected routes, then we'll go on to static routes, and then finally dynamic routes with OSPF. But with connected routes, this is similar to what you're doing at your home, where you have your connection to a default gateway to essentially get out to the internet. And while I will be showing internet access, we're going to start with just connecting our two different VLANs from the previous labs where we set up VLAN 99 on access one on the left hand side and VLAN 20 with access two on the right hand side. So without further ado, let's jump on in. All right, so looking at the lab diagram, we still have our access one and access two switch. We've got our port two between them. Uh, I've removed the redundant port on six just for simplicity. And you might notice I've added the internet. Woohoo! So that's gonna be added here a little bit later on, on port five or something like that. We've got our PC one with its appropriate address. We've got PC three with its address, both in VLAN 99. And we've got PC4 over here with its own address of 20.4 as opposed to 99 and 99 here. So we have no current gateway, but we're going to go ahead and add one in to both PC1 in the same subnet that our IP address is in, and in PC3, add a gateway in the same subnet as PC1 and everything else. And then we need to add that gateway as a switch virtual interface on access one and that way any of our interfaces that support vlan 99 such as ethernet 111 and 113 should both have access to that shared switch virtual interface it should be reachable essentially so let's check that out if i go over to my pcs one pc3 and pc4 you're going to see those up and we're really just looking at pc1 and pc3 so show ip and these are just Linux machines again. In Windows, you would do it through the graphical user interface or like a net shell or something like that. But in our case, we can just simply pop this in. With the gateway, you do not need to put a subnet mask. It's considered in part of the subnet mask that the host is using. So there we go. We now have the gateway assigned, show IP, and there's our gateway. Now we haven't actually set that up on the router, but we'll do that here shortly. So same thing with PC3 do an IP address command and put in the address that we're going to use. In this case, 172.16.99.3 and the gateway 172.16.99.101. They're going to have the same gateway because they are in the same subnet. They both begin with 172.16.99. So the gateway should be the same for them. You can run multiple gateways and that requires that you have a little bit of support to figure out which gateway is active and which one's standby and all that. But for our lab, we'll just have a single gateway for both of these guys. So that should take care of it. Confirm that the address is assigned. There's the command. And for PC3, we pop that in as well. And then looking at access two, we want to set the same thing for PC4. So PC4 is on port four, part of VLAN 20. We want to go ahead and apply an address for 20.101 which ultimately will point to access to. Now we haven't set those on the routers, as I said, but we're gonna take care of that in the next step. So we're just making sure our addressing is correct. And up to this point, we never added a gateway. We're gonna rectify that. So 172.16.20.4 and the gateway 172.16.20.101. 101. So if you wanna see the command again, give it a second. There we go. So that was the command I put in the IP address slash 24 is the subnet mask and the gateway is pointing to 101. So this is going to time out and fail until we actually go to the routers and apply it. So we've confirmed that all our PCs are set up. We're now going to go into access one under the VLAN 99 interface, add the IP address and then validate with the show IP interface brief. So the SVIs, the switch virtual interface will host this for us just fine. Go to configure show IP interface brief. I do not have an address yet, but I do have VLAN 99, which is already set up. So if I go under interface VLAN 99, then I can apply an address 99.101 slash 24. 
The gateway does not need to be the first address in, that's usable. It doesn't need to be the last address, .254. It could be any address, as long as it's not being used by another host or another router. Press end, it took the command. Let's go ahead and do a show IP interface brief again, where the first time I ran this command, I had nothing. Second time I run the command, we've got it. And even though it's a layer three interface, it's actually up by default on CX. Normally your physical ports, if you make them routed and put an IP address or whatever, they're gonna be shut down by default unless you enable them. On the 6000 series, all of our ports are enabled, but they're not routed ports. On the 8000 series, like the 8030 or 8320, 8325, 8400, those are considered routers first. So all of their interfaces are layer three routed interfaces. They're shut down, they're set up for routing, no spanning tree. So they're meant to be used in the core. With the 62s, the 6300s, they're, and 6400s, they're meant to really be used at the access layer of our network. So they're gonna be switching first, meaning you could just kind of plug them in and go without any configuration and all your interfaces will be up, switching and running. So there's my address. Does that mean I can actually ping my PC1? Eh, let's give it a shot. Oh, look at that. We're getting pings, we're getting responses there. That's great. And um, I now have my gateway established. I should have reachability between that. So with the interface VLAN configured, PC1 and PC3, both having access ports in VLAN 99, they can access this switch virtual interface that we just created. Let's do the same thing on Access 2. So if I go to Access 2, I'm gonna be configuring another SVI, but instead of VLAN 99, I'm gonna be going into VLAN 20 because that's the one that my PC is facing. So I'm gonna be a gateway for my PC. So let's do that. Let's go into Interface VLAN 20. The VLAN was already created, so I didn't need to type VLAN 20. It's already there. I'm just gonna go right into the interface itself. And as soon as I put an IP address on that, that interface is now layer three. We use the same address, why not? And because it's my own connected interface, I'm gonna specify a gateway. For your PCs, your hosts, they're just going to the gateway destination, they're not hosting it themselves. So they don't need to indicate a subnet mask, but since we are hosting it, we should put a subnet mask in there. Show IP interface brief. You could exit out and do that command, but it works right here without any additional help or anything. So now we have a switch virtual interface. Rather than applying the layer three address to a physical port, we're just applying it to a switch virtual interface, an SVI. It is now up. Dare we test our connectivity to PC4? So let's give it a shot. Ping 172.16.20.4. Now, if the port is enabled, a layer one, if VLAN 20 is set up as an access port facing our PC4, and if PC4 has an address in the same subnet, it should be a work, but it failed. Why? Because I'm actually under the interface right here. It wants me to end out and go back to just privilege or the manager view right here. So to do that, I could type end. I could use a shortcut with control plus the you know, letter Z on the keyboard. That would do it as well. Or I can just say, you know what? Can you just do the ping and then hit do ping and it will work. So a little, little, little command line mischief there that you can learn and play around with, which is you know, an easy way to get done what you want to do, a couple different ways. But the ping works great, it works great. So the PCs can reach their gateways, the gateways can reach the PCs. PC4 has the gateway address ready, so if it doesn't know how to reach a destination, it will go to the gateway. But we need to make sure we can actually get to this gateway. If you're gonna hand off packets to a router to route, you need to at least be able to hand it off. So let's test that. And yeah, we're getting good ping responses there. So in this lab, what we ended up doing was we ended up making sure our layer three addressing was set up not only on our PCs, but also to the actual routers themselves, setting up the SVIs, making sure they were enabled and making sure we had that single hop re, uh, reachability between your PCs and the actual gateways themselves. In the next lab, we're actually going to test our full reachability here and make sure that these guys can actually hit each other. As a final little extra piece here, what would happen if I actually ping between PC1 and PC2? That is going to end up not working, but we don't know why yet. We're gonna show you why. If I try and ping to PC4, 
this should actually show up as destination unreachable. It's hitting the gateway and the gateway is failing to reach PC4. The gateway access one is not able to reach PC4. So the packets are arriving here, but then the router doesn't know how to get to this subnet over here. So it sends an ICMP response saying, hey, that destination is unreachable. I don't have a route. So even though we're the gateway in access one, access one doesn't know how to get there. That's something we're gonna solve in the next set of videos. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video.